and Roger, it seems like the market is finally getting the message that Jay Powell is serious when he says he is going to be moving rates to a, until they are sufficiently restrictive. Um, has the market caught up with the Fed, or is there more of a reckoning to come? I think the market has caught up with the Fed uh, as of today. I think the challenge is the Fed may find itself going maybe faster than it currently expects. And so I think that's a little bit of the dilemma here. Um, they were clear yesterday about the message of higher, more quickly and for longer. And I think the market heard that. But now the incoming data, I think, will drive whether or not the Fed executes the plan as laid out or actually has to, you know, turn even a little faster. So I think that's the dilemma right now, Becky. Watching these other central banks today, Roger, I, I mean, the Fed's actions, this is not coordinated. They have not sat down together and said we're going to be doing these things. But what the Fed has done by tightening and watching the dollar strengthen, it doesn't leave much room for these other banks to do anything else. That's exactly right. Um, so the other banks are in uh, a bit of a dilemma. But we should also recognize that this inflationary challenge exists globally as well. So it's not just that these other banks are responding to the Fed. Um, if they weren't confronting inflation in their own countries or the fear of inflation in their own countries, they wouldn't necessarily have to follow. And so I think we've got the fact that inflation in some ways is global and all of them are moving in exactly the same direction. I, I was a little surprised that Bank of Japan actually taking steps to shore up the currency, the yen, for the first time since 1998, but they are not doing anything to raise rates. And um, I looked at the inflation numbers in Japan the other day. The headline was, look, uh, inflation shocks to Japan, um, really comes in at these surprising levels. It was up 2.8 percent. That's nothing compared to the rates you see around the globe, 8.1 or 8.3 percent here in the United States, uh, north of 13 percent in Germany. And that's when you strip out uh, energy and some of these other forces. No, exactly right. So the Japanese have been struggling with um, uh, inflation, uh, disinflation, maybe even occasionally uh, deflation for several decades now. So for them, getting to 2.8 is, is a sign of some success. I think what they're worried about is they have to also think about the export side of their economy, which is why uh, managing the yen properly is, is going to be important for them. But I think they are in a slightly different place where they're probably welcoming some of this inflation, which is, as you point out, relatively low compared to the uh, eye-popping numbers in other parts of the world. So we already started to hear the pushback yesterday from people in Congress, people in the Senate, who are very concerned about what's going to happen to the economy. We've heard it from some other business leaders who have been raising concerns about this. And yet the Federal Reserve expectations, at least if you ask those who sit on the board, is that they're going to raise another 75 basis points come November. That's what they're expecting at this point. There is going to be political pushback. Will they be able, be able to withstand it? I think they have no choice. And I think Jay Powell was clear yesterday using words like resolve. He also recognized and put back into the conversation that um, it is their mandate as given by Congress to respond to inflation. Uh, it's one of the reasons you have an independent central bank. And he finally put this into a broader context, which is the overall long-term goal is much more balanced and sustainable growth, which everybody wants. So I think he's lined up his arguments as well as he can. Uh, and now it's a question of actually executing on the word resolve that he used several times. I think that's completely correct. But I think you will also have political pushback that says you have two mandates given from Congress. One is to protect uh, the jobs market. And um, how, how, how can he push back? How can he insulate himself? And will he receive protection, let's say, from the Biden administration as they get closer to, to an election? Well, I've observed the Biden administration has, has taken a page from uh, other administrations by basically saying we respect the independence of the Fed, uh, full stop, and making very few comments. I think on the labor market, uh, what we heard from Powell yesterday was he sees this as a way to protect the long-term labor market mandate by saying that what we want is a sustainable labor market over cycles. Uh, and, and so I think he's trying to protect himself on the labor market flank by saying, you know, when you have inflation, the path to the successful dual mandate is to focus on being inflation down. I think he'll also point out that inflation is a very visible now, uh, some would have called it a hidden, but very visible tax on the low and moderate income people that many are worried about. And so I think he's going to have, uh, you know, dual defenses on the, um, on that part of the mandate, the labor market part of the mandate. 
No question. I mean, inflation is so incendiary, especially once it really gets wedged into your economy. Um, but is he going to have to get out there and talk a lot more about that? Will they send other people to talk about that? Because it's true, inflation is horrible. It hurts people uh, more than just about anything. Um, but getting that message out there, especially in this crazy campaign season, who, who's going to be the one who's going to be out there educating people and talking about that? I think the answer is all of them. Um, it is a message of Drew Hill from the Reserve Bank presence, and I think they will be very actively going around their districts uh, with, a, with a singular message. Uh, Jay Powell will, uh, I th in his case, I think the issue is repeating the message that he's given several times, and I expect you'll hear the other governors when they speak uh, doing the same. But at the end of the day, you know, it is the Powell voice, the chair's voice, that really uh, is the loudest one.